direction as opposed to the positive direction. So this would now have coordinates negative 0.141 comma negative 0.99. Because you just rotated and because it is symmetric with, the, with respect to the x-axis and symmetric with respect to the y-axis and with respect to the origin, that's what happens. No, see, here was t. So that's the first part, the t. The plus pi is starting from the red line and going a half circle further. So the whole blue thing is t plus pi. Yes, because it's pi. Where would this point be? P of negative t. In quadrant four, how would I get to quadrant four? What? By going what? By going the other way, so going clockwise. So I go clockwise into quadrant four, the same distance I went into quadrant one, which will be right here. So there's my negative t. There's my negative t. Now we said that our unit circle was symmetric with respect to the, okay, I know my pictures really look bad, but this is close enough, okay? With respect to the x-axis, so what happens when I reflect over? What happens to the coordinates of this point? Because that's where it's going to be down here. This line is supposed to match up with that one when I fold it this way. What happens to the coordinates of the point? X stays the same, so that's point one four one, and y becomes negative, so point... 9, 9, but negative. See, this whole symmetry thing is really nice. And you guys, you don't get it yet, but it'll all come to you when I start telling you about sines and cosines. Because then you only have to memorize one quadrant, and everything else will just follow through. Follow through for them. What if I wanted to do t minus pi? 1. How do I represent the angle t minus pi in drawing a picture of that angle? Well, what does the t tell me to do? Oh, the t. That's where you start. Do I really start at t? Go to t. All angles start at the x-axis, positive x-axis. So what is the t telling me to do? Go counterclockwise to t, and then the minus pi is telling me to go from there and what? Clockwise. Go clock. Which way? Clockwise. Go clockwise because it's minus. So I know this picture is getting messy, but I don't think my circle will get improved if I draw a new one. So go to t, and then turn around and go halfway around the circle in this in the clockwise direction. So this is t minus pi. Where's that point? Same place as t plus pi, it turns out. And I went to t, and I went halfway around the circle in the other direction. If I go halfway in one direction, halfway in the other direction, I should meet. Yes, that's the halfway part. <coughs> exactly the same spot. So it's this same, same set of coordinates. What about this one? Negative t minus pi. I wonder if I have another color. Do you start on the opposite side of t? Do I, what do you mean start on the opposite side of t? Like where that blue line is? You go clockwise, right? Clockwise starting. So I always start here. So where does my negative t tell me to go? The green oh. line. Clockwise. Clockwise to the green line. And then minus pi? Negative is going to be clockwise. Negative is clockwise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, all right, this is the new blue. So negative t, I start here, down here I get to negative t. Minus pi means I keep going from here in the same direction to approximately there. Okay, it's probably closer to there. Close enough. There we go. So this, all going in that direction, this line is the negative t minus pi. Well, now we're going to have to think about what I did. Well, I went to negative t. I know its coordinates. And then I rotated myself 180 degrees. So when I rotate 180 degrees, what does it do for things that were down here and when it moves them up to up here? It puts them in the same relative position distance-wise, right? But what happens to the coordinates of this thing? X is negative, so it's going to be negative 0.141, and Y is what? 0.99. Y is positive up there. This symbol.
tree is really, really helpful with our circle. And don't you just love the pretty pictures? All right. Now, where is pi over 2 on my unit circle? Or, um, at 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1? I don't know why it's a negative. I don't know. I'm at one. I've been looking at that. It's up here, right? It's the angle that starts here and goes a quarter of the way around the circle. And it has coordinates zero and one. Now, if we want to define the sign of pi over two, that is going to be the y coordinate. on the unit circle of the point. No, I like of the point on the unit circle better. So what will be the sign of pi over 2 if we define it as the coordinate of the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle where this where the angle runs in the unit circle? No, what's the coordinate of the point? One. So the sign of pi over two is equal to one. Cosine of pi over two is defined as anybody want to guess? The x coordinate. Yep. Of the point on the unit circle. So, as we were just told, the cosine then of pi over 2 is going to be 0. Now, we're actually, when we use our unit circle definition, the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle, where the angle, the terminal side of the angle runs into the unit circle, is always going to be the sine of that angle. And the x coordinate of the point where the terminal side of the angle runs into the unit circle is always going to be the cosine of that angle. So easy ones are obviously pi over 2. What's this in terms of angles? Pi. So pi will be easy because we can easily see the negative 1, 0. What's this one going to be in terms of angles? 3 pi over 2. We can easily read off its point. And when we get all the way back to here, 2 pi. Now when we come back on Monday, we're going to get the ones that are in between that are important. Thank you.